I'd like to show beats per minute display, endnotes, and then we'll do a demonstration of logos. So first beats per minute. The players can show both beats per minute and endnotes in the players. They'll be right in this section up here. Beats per minute displays are taken from iTunes. So in order to set beats per minute, we'd have to have that in a track in iTunes. So I have the same track selected here in iTunes that I have in Q in DJ, and I'm going to get info on the track. I'm going to guess that the beats per minute is about 128 beats per minute. I'll say OK to that, come back to DJ, and DJ actually detected that the file changed, and it actually reloads the file uh, if it's in queue before it's time to play. Uh, this is just in case uh, a file changes while in queue for some reason. Let's say if you have an hour-long mix going on in one player and you have the next track in queue, uh, but you're actually having it updated uh, while you're waiting for this other track to finish, this makes sure that whatever the current track is uh, will get loaded. Uh, so that's why it got the 128 beats per minute uh, as fast as it did here. Let me also show that if we move to the rate or pitch, you'll see the time changing, the remaining time changing at the top, and the ramp changing proportionally, but also the beats per minute changes as well, so I just thought I'd show that. The other part we might want to display, which might be useful uh, for live work, live assist work, would be what kind of ending does this song have? And like ramps, you have to specify this yourself. Now. This probably isn't a cold end song, but let's just pretend it is. We can just put in whatever four letters we choose right here in the track properties, and that will always be displayed in the player, giving us also a clue about the song. Last part we'll look at is logos. So let's go back to track properties on this track. And if you remember from the first video about Radiologic DJ, I showed a little bit about logos, but didn't actually demonstrate it, so I want to do that now. Uh, so going back to the palette here, we do have some uh, approximately five second bits here, which we'll use for our logoing of the tracks. And normally when you would want to do this, you'd probably want to do it perhaps on a, a longer mix. And uh, let me show the preferences. I'll close track properties for now and go in the preferences. And the way you turn this function on is in the preferences general. Play logos using track properties, which I'll show in a second, or by some rule. Uh, so you don't have to set any logo times in the track properties. Uh, a rule, for instance, could be if the track is longer than 30 minutes, then we'll start logoing it every 8 minutes. But you specify what you want, and then you tell it from which uh, palette set. Right now we have main selected here. Which palette set you actually want it to do its logoing from? Just in case you left it on another palette set, DJ knows to which palette set to go to actually do the logoing. But this actually does need to be on for the track properties one to work. So let's go select the track. We'll look at track properties. And we're going to go through this track and pick where we want our first logo to be. So this is actually, instead of going by some rule, we're actually listening to the audio and saying, ah, this is a good place to do it. So let's go through the track a little bit. I'm gonna scrub it. All right, so that's where I want my logo to end. And I know they're about five seconds and I wanna give a little more time than that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this back to about probably like 23 or so. I'm gonna hit the uh, logo button actually that is on there already. I must have left that on from a previous, some previous work. But when you would first come in here, uh, you should see nothing like that. And we take it up to 23, hit logo, and you get the time there. And we can pick a, another time for it, maybe up around this area. Let's listen to this. That's 158. I want to probably back it off about six seconds or more. Uh, probably 52, maybe 51 and a half, right about there. And I'll put another logo there. Okay. So I've got two logos. Let's try to remember that. 23 seconds and 1 minute and 51 seconds. So what it's going to do is it's going to pick each one of these logos one after the other 
as it goes through. So the first one it will do will be this Daniel one and then it will do the Emily one. Now just to demonstrate this, I'm going to go to a different set and I'm actually going to start the track and we'll watch what happens. All trance, all day, all night, you're listening to Radiologic Trance. All right, I'll put Duck on for right now, but you can see what happened. It changed the palette set to get ready uh, a couple seconds before it actually had to play, and then it would have played it about approximately the time that we asked it to. The next one will be up at 151, so I'm going to advance just a little bit shy of that, and we'll watch it again. All trance, all day, all night, you're listening to Radio Logic Trance. Okay, so you can see it did it about the right time. It went on and did the next palette button. So that's how logos work.